going on, everybody? We all good? Yeah, well, well, first of all, thank you so much for coming out to the show tonight. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I want to let you all know real quick, for those of you who came to see some really intelligent, life-altering comedy, you've come to the wrong show. If you're here to turn your brain off for like an hour and a half and laugh at some fucking silly shit, welcome to my world. Here we are, you know what I mean? Now, I do want to say before we get started, uh, it, so we just moved from California, and um, we're, that's all it deserves. Um, we, uh, we're not quite used to the humidity yet. It is, anybody else not used to humidity walking around? It's crazy. Here's how you know, by the way, you're in a city that has a lot of humidity. Because I saw dudes walking down the street today like this. <laughs> well, you got to shake it off your leg one time in Nashville. It is fucking sticky sack season here, I'll tell you what. It was stuck to my leg like a fruit roll-up all day today. <laughs> and on both sides, like a bat on the wall. Like... <laughs> now, I'm looking out. I did see a couple of women. Uh, don't... Hey, don't ooh. If you see a guy do this, don't you ooh. <laughs> he didn't stick his hand, he didn't, he didn't stick his hands down his pants. This dude, he's a gentleman. <laughs> you see a dude do this, you tip your hat and you say, good day, sir, to that guy, and you let him walk by. I'll tell you something else, too. And this is it, ladies, we love you. But I can't, I can't hear one more woman complain about watching a dude adjust himself in public. I can't hear, it's so hypocritical. Especially considering down on Broadway today, I was only there for a half an hour, I saw at least six women in jean shorts do this. <laughs> fuck you, and you're hypocr- fuck you. You guys go in with two hands, too. And you make eye contact, you're confident, you're like, what, fuck you, what, you know? One woman went in deep, deep. I swear when she went like this, I heard a I heard, I swear I did. Like, you know, like you're opening some biscuits or something. Were... I can't hear it anymore, you know. Well, happy Father's Day, everybody. Happy Father's Day. Now, um... Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Now... Uh, I have a lot of favorite stories about all my kids, but this one is my absolute favorite story about my youngest son. And um, so here's a couple things you need to know about him going in. First of all, my youngest son, here's what I love the most about him. No matter where he is, that's the best place he's ever been. <laughs> Yo, that dude does not know how to have a bad time. He, he look, he, and it's a great, I envy that attitude. Does, and by the way, look, his energy is crazy. I could put him down at any of your tables. He could talk to any of you for an hour and you'd be like, oh, I know this dude for a decade. Like it's crazy that kind of, I don't even know if you call it a skill, but it's, it's born, you know? He is also the dumbest of my three kids. <laughs> now, he's not dumb, I'm not saying he's dumb, but who has multiple kids in here? Anybody have multiple kids? Hey, look, if you got multiple kids, You've got a dumb one, too. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> they may not be stupid, but there's a stupidest one out of all of them. That's the dumb one. And I'm going to tell you something else. <laughs> if you've got more than one kid, you have had this conversation with your partner in the bedroom. <laughs> what the fuck are we going to do with the dumb one? We're gonna let him walk out there by himself? He's so fucking stupid, you know what I mean? <laughs> Here's my favorite story about my son. So, uh, a, a long time ago, a long time ago, um, when I uh, was a single guy, I used to take the kids down to Mexico and um, on day trips. And because Mexico, I lived in Southern California, it was cheap, you could go down there for $50, it's a new culture, you know what I mean? It's a new country, and it's a super cool adventure, you know? So, but you couldn't go until you were seven. So by the time Jakey turned seven, I was married, and, but he was like, I want to go to Mexico. And I said, cool. And he was 
guys, driving down to Mexico, he was pumped. <laughs> the whole way, right? Just fucking pointing things out. He's like, is that Mexico? I'm like, no, that's Home Depot. Uh, <laughs> But we're driving down there. We get to Mexico. We're there for about an hour. And he turns to me, he goes, ha, dad, I love, and by the way, he has always stood like Forrest Gump. I have no idea why. <laughs> this dude has always, he used to, he was a great baseball player. He did a double and slide into second and he'd pop up like this. <laughs> and I was always, I was always like, great hit, buddy. Put your hands down, great hit. Not bad. Well, you know. So we're there for an hour. And he goes, ha! Dad, I love Mexico. Everybody here is so smart. And I was like. What makes you say that, man? He goes, ha! They all know how to speak Spanish. And I was like, oh, oh, oh. come here, you dumb motherfucker. Okay. Daddy's gonna take care of you for as long as he has to, I guess. You're gonna live with me till you're 40, aren't you, buddy? We were there for another hour, and this dude decides he can speak Spanish. Because to him, it sounds like this. <laughs> and I go, hey, man, hey, hey. I said, do not speak the Spanish. And he goes, no, I know how to speak it. I go, no, you don't, I don't. So we walk around for a while. We end up going to a restaurant, you know? And we sit down and the dude drops two menus. And in English, he says to me, what can I get you to drink? I said, I would love a Modelo, please. He said, absolutely. And in English, he says to my son, what can I get you to drink, young man? My son's looking at the menu and he's like. <laughs> and he goes, Mexican Coke. I go, what are you saying to this dude? And he walks away, I go, Jakey, what I tell you, man? Do not speak the Spanish. And he goes, no, I know how to talk it. I go, no, you don't. And he got really cocky. He goes, he took my order. I was like, you said the word Coke, bro. You know what I mean? I said, listen, man, I know you don't understand this, and I, don't, I know you don't mean to, but you're insulting this man's culture and his heritage and his language, and you're doing it right to his face. And I'm telling you right now, that's not okay. So under no circumstance, are you to speak the Spanish ever again? Do you understand me? And he goes, yes, dad. So we finish up our food, right? And uh, because I tell him not to speak the Spanish, he's sulking and he's like, I just wanna go home. And I said, all right. He goes, can I lay down on the back seat and go to sleep? And I was like, sure. So we're driving up to the border and uh, the border patrol guy, he says to me, he goes, uh, can I see your ID? And I said, yeah. And he goes, great. He said, you got a birth certificate for the kid? I said, no. Why do I need a birth certificate for my kid? And he said, well, I got to make sure every child that leaves Mexico is a Mexican. How do I know he's not Mexican? And I was like, So I said, Jacob, speak the Spanish. <laughs> this dude's head popped up from the back seat like. <laughs> and the guy just looked at me and he looked at him and he was like, have a great day. <laughs> We're driving out of Mexico, right? 15 minutes, no, we, neither one of us said anything. And he's just looking out the back window and it's rolled down. He's got the wind blowing in his face. 
and I just hear him mumble under his breath. I told you I know how to speak Spanish. <laughs> fucking dick. <laughs> now listen, guys, uh, if you've never seen my show or know much about me, I, I, I enjoy weird shit. Uh, I enjoy things that are a little different. I enjoy uh, fun and energy. And I will tell you, a lot of weird things have been happening at my shows. Uh, and I think I kind of invite it. Uh, it started, and, I, and I'll tell you when it started. It started about four years ago. I don't know if any of you have been on my YouTube channel and have seen, have you seen the video of, about the woman throwing up in her margarita cup? Okay, so I just need to give you guys, okay, all right. For those of you who haven't seen this video, this is an actual video. It happened, I just happened to be filming my set that night. I was on stage at a casino in Connecticut called Mohegan Sun. I was just filming, you can see this video on my YouTube channel. And I was talking to this side of the room. And from behind me, right here, I just heard, <laughs> And I turn and I look back and there's a woman sitting right here, staring at me like this. And I was like, oh my God. And I didn't want to throw her out because obviously she wanted to be at the show, you know what I mean? So, but I, th I was like, I wonder what she's gonna do with that, you know? <laughs> they were drinking these giant margaritas. She had an empty cup in front of her. This is all on video, guys. She grabs the cup, she slowly brings it to her like this, staring at me the whole time and just goes. <laughs> like, she <laughs> like she was feeding a baby bird. <laughs> It was some prison shit. She just stuck. <laughs> but I was like, all right. You know, I'll tell you, one of the real reason I wasn't worried. I don't know if any of you have tried to throw up in your mouth before. That's not easy. And the fact that no nothing came out the sides, I was like, well, she's done this before. So <laughs> I don't need to worry about her. She's a professional, you know what I mean? Like, 15 minutes later, again, all on video, talking over here again, and I hear, <laughs> and there she is. Her friend who's sitting right next to her. I see her lean over, and I think she's gonna say, hey, we should get you out of here. But she leans over and she goes, hey, get your shit together. That's a good friend, by the way. That's a good friend. A bad friend is, you're doing great. This is great. A good friend is, you're a fucking grown-up. Get your shit together. You shouldn't be throwing up in public. You're 40, Sally. That's a good friend. I'll tell you the weirdest, maybe the weirdest thing that's happened at one of my shows, and then we'll get into it. Happened about three weeks ago in Indianapolis. So, okay. Uh, <laughs> So I was talking to the crowd and I said, who's got kids? And there was a man and a woman there who were clearly together. Arms around each other, whispering in each other's ears, nibbling on each other. And I'm like, oh, look at this. This a couple loves each other, you know? And I go, how many kids you got? And the dude goes, I got, I got three boys. I go, and the, girl, the woman goes, I got one girl. And I go, oh, are you not married? And uh, she goes, oh, we're married. And I go, oh. And the guy goes, just not to each other. And I was like, what? <laughs> gonna be like they're cute you know they were both separated and that's how they get into talking about each other they were both married ha, ha, all right so I was like oh I go so the other the other your partners I mean they know you're here together right and the guy goes I fucking hope not <laughs> and I said dude you're so confident talking about this in front of a room full of people and he goes yeah I live an hour from here I don't know any of these people And then from the back of the room, in the dark, you just hear a guy go, I know you, Mark. And I was like, oh, Mark. You're fucked, bro. You're fucked, Mark. Anyways, guys, I have to tell you how excited I am for this show tonight. Not, I, 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 I'm gonna tell you a little something about me, man. 
as an artist, one thing that I love to do is I love to challenge myself. I love to do things I've never done before. It's really how I keep that energy of doing this all the time. To play guitar on stage and be able to do this um, is such a crazy opportunity. I feel so lucky to be here with you guys tonight. So thank you all so, so much for coming and sharing this with me. Let's see. an hour and a half of my stand-up, I can't remember the songs, so that's the set list right there. Um, and so, uh, so I had always wanted to, um, I got some parodies, I got some originals. I had always wanted to uh, write a song about a dude with man boobs. <laughs> so, uh, is, this, is this good where the mic is? Yeah, why so? That's what the fuck I'm about to do, bro. <laughs> I think I sat down with a guitar in front of a microphone, bro. Oh, you mean play something so he can hear it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you got it, got it. Sorry for being an asshole. Okay. Uh... <laughs> okay. Uh... <laughs> Listen, guys, here's a couple things now. One of the reasons I'm nervous doing this in Nashville is because there's probably some musicians in the crowd. I do not want you to be offended by, by my guitar play. <laughs> the reason that this isn't plugged in is because when I plug the guitar in, I find you can really hear what it sounds like. <laughs> so way better, I like my guitar mic adjacent. <laughs> Look at you two guys. How old are you guys? 18. Oh. <laughs> That's how both of you laugh. I've never met you before, but I know you both go, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> we'll get back to you guys later. <laughs> All right. Song about a dude with man boobs. Here we go. Big old titties on my friend Dan. Okay, all right, here we go. Right. <laughs> I had to get that out. Okay, here we go, here we go. Big old titties on my friend Dan. Never seen a C cup look so good on a man. Here we go. At the swimming pool, putting on some suntan lotion, greasing up those bad boys in a roundabout motion. You know, old Dan, he could win a wet t shirt contest. Areolas like salami, nipples like sausage. And oh, yeah, Dan's got a nice old rag. In a couple of years, they're gonna swing to his back. And oh yeah, Dan's got a nice old rack. Wonder if he knows they make me tingle in my sack. Come on, Dre. He's got nuts and a dick. He's also got a pair of big old jiggles. himself big old titties on my friend Dan never seen a C cup look so good on a man weird shit. <laughs> hey man, did you suck a titty? <laughs> <laughs> man. 
maybe I should have saved that to the end. I don't know how to follow that. Wait till you see what the next guy whips out. All right. So, my, uh, my buddy called me not too long ago, and um, he was like, man, I gained a bunch of weight over quarantine, and I developed a very specific problem. Um, will you write a song about it? And I said, absolutely. <laughs> Here you go. Well, I gained a few pounds, belly's big and round. I lost my junk under my gut Thanks to the Rona I can't see my bona I'm sorry, that's so stupid Okay, <laughs> okay hold on Thanks to the Rona I can't see my bona and my balls are somewhere near my butt <laughs> And I saw the surprise in my wife's eyes When she saw my pubic hair She said, you need a trim, I don't know where to begin But I'll never find Waldo in there That's all I got right now uh, Appreciate it. Um, this next song, um, for I'm for sure gonna lose a couple of you on. Uh, but I don't know if you guys, any of you remember that song. My name is Luca. Yep, all right, here we go. All right, here we go. I see your fupa. Okay, you can't laugh at man boobs and not at fupa. That is not okay. Either all the jiggly body parts are funny or none of the jiggly body parts are funny. But you don't get to fucking pick just because you might have one doesn't mean that shit's not funny. So either you laugh at both or you laugh at neither, but you can't fucking pick and choose, everybody, okay? Now, if you don't know what a fupa is, that's legit. Ask your neighbor, somebody at the table next to you definitely knows. Do you guys know? Neither one of you know? Oh. Oh. Listen, man, you know, just teaching the youth the important stuff, you know what I mean? <laughs> okay, here we go, all right. I see your fupa. Your pussy has a second floor. That's all I got right now, but I think it's gonna be a pretty good song once I finish it. I think that really is gonna be a fucking good one. Now, it is Father's Day, and then uh, people ask me all the time about Father's Day gifts, and I think Father's Day is super Super interesting, man. The difference between Father's Day and Mother's Day, you know. I'll tell you something right now. You know what I really... Ha Where are the fathers in here? Round of applause. I'll tell you what we all want. And I think this is uh, pretty universal. We would like you to leave us the fuck alone for an entire day. That's it. You don't have to do anything except open the front door and not come back for a while. That's it. And you know the difference between Mother's Day and Father's Day? Mother's Day is like, I'm gonna go to a spa, I'm gonna go out with my friends, I'm gonna have a nice dinner. And Father's Day, somehow we're all fucking doing something together. I don't know how that works. <laughs> we're going out to your favorite restaurant. This is my favorite restaurant? I had no idea this was my favorite restaurant. I've never fucking been here before. Whose favorite restaurant is this? <laughs> so, um, you know, their Father's Day, I just thought I would sing a couple of, uh, you know, my kids always ask why I don't sing songs about them, and so... I remember one time they were like, can you sing a song about us and let everybody know how you feel about us? And I was like, yep. <laughs> this is for the kids. <laughs> J 
Children are beautiful, they're little miracles of life. What you've always wanted for you and your wife. But bless their little souls. Children are assholes. <laughs> and my kids are assholes. Your kids are assholes. Cause all kids are assholes. It's gonna be okay, everybody. <laughs> when you were pregnant, oh, it looks so cute. Then you get them home, they just eat, sleep, and they poop. Do you know a baby can scream like a pterodactyl for seven hours in a row? Nobody tells you that shit. Do you remember disposable income? Do you remember you could fuck in the kitchen? Do you know the average cost of raising one kid is 500 grand? And I would sell my kids for that. Oh, I guess I'm not alone on that one, holy shit. That's why I smoke a ton of weed. Cause children are assholes. And my kids are assholes. And your kids are assholes. Cause all kids are assholes. Unless you're this person, not my son. My son's not an asshole, he's perfect. My little amethyst, or you fucking, his name's amethyst or stone or seed or some stupid shit like that. <laughs> not my little amethyst, he's perfect. It's like having another grown up at the house. He doesn't do anything wrong. And we let him have whatever opinion he wants because we think it is important that he expresses himself fully all of the time. And we want him to be a butterfly and to spread his wings and just to spread his wings and fly. That's why when you're at a restaurant, we let him run up to you and scream in your fucking face. Because he doesn't have any rules, he's a butterfly. Fly, Amethyst, fly. We want you to fly, Amethyst, fly. Fly, Amethyst, fly. And if you're that person, guess what? You are the asshole. All kids are assholes. I see we've all encountered one or two of those parents before in our lives. Um, I will tell you, man, you know, I, obviously we all love our kids and, and uh, we all have certain things about our certain kids that we love the most. And, and so one of the things that I love the most about my daughter is my daughter was the most creative young person I had ever met and ever come in contact with. And like she, you put mac and cheese down in front of her and she would just do a mac and cheese dance or, if you gave her a hamburger, she would make that hamburger talk to you and give it a voice. And we would give her a doll and she would write a play for the doll and you would watch it in the living room like a half an hour later. Just, it was always creativity and I loved it. So when she was six and a half years old, my wife and I, we bought her a cat. And she said, I would like to write a poem about that cat and read it at the talent show. And I said, okay. So this is the poem that my daughter <laughs> wrote about her cat that she read in front of the entire school. <laughs> and I just put it to music. Ooh, I love her, my pussy. I like to hug her, my pussy. Yeah, my pussy likes to run around. My pussy, she makes the cutest sounds, my pussy. She can be scary, my pussy. She's really hairy, my pussy. Yeah, my pussy sleeps right on my chest. My pussy, she likes my brother best, my pussy. She's as happy as can be. She's part of the family Yeah, 
she likes to sleep all over the place. <laughs> My pussy, she lick your face. <laughs> Pussy, she lick your face. Thank you. I want you to know when she opened with Who I Love Her My Pussy, I turned to my wife, I'm like, hey, we gotta go. She said, why? I was like, the chorus is my pussy. Like, she's going back to it at least a couple more times. We, we gotta get the fuck out of here, you know? She goes, yeah, but if we leave, she's gonna be humiliated. And I said, yeah, but if we stay, we're gonna be humiliated. <laughs> we're gonna get out of here, you know? We stayed, my wife is a better person than I am. And, uh... So we're waiting outside of the auditorium for the kids to come out and the parents come out first. And look, we all know we live in a generation with some judgy fucking parents. <laughs> and they were streaming out of that auditorium, walking past me like this. And one woman just walked up to me and she goes, you know, you really ought to proofread your daughter's poetry before she reads it in front of the whole school. And she walked off and her husband walked up to me and goes, your house sounds fun. He just high five me. Like <laughs> I will tell you, man, and I, and I love having my wife here. You know what? Um, and I should probably explain this. I'm, I'm following, look, she knows this, but I love bothering her. I do little things to bother her. If you're married to someone and you don't constantly fuck with them, because here's it, it's the perfect audience, because where the fuck are they going? You know what I mean? <laughs> Yo, I have this one long hair on my eyebrow that gets real long, and I'll lay in bed next to her and I'll twirl it like I'm a supervillain, just like. <laughs> she fucking hates it. You know what else I do? When she's in the bathroom and I, have, and I, and I take my socks off, where do I put my socks, babe? Yeah. <laughs> and like 10 minutes in, she's like, what's that smell? What is that smell? <laughs> These fucking socks! Yeah. Just so you know, ladies, when you say don't do that, it bothers us. I'm like, well, I gotta do this for at least another month then, I guess. <laughs> so, one of the things that I've always done to Beth is she loves love songs. I love ruining love songs for her. Um, so what I'll do is I'll write parodies for songs that she loves so she never hears the words that she likes. <laughs> and so this is one of the songs that she loves. And um, a long time ago, a couple years ago, I did some research online and I found out there are guys out there who have tiny penises. And um, I imagine that those guys get to have sex every now and then. I also imagine that that sex is probably Pretty awkward for everybody involved, so. <laughs> this is a song about a dude with a tiny penis having awkward sex, and it's from his point of view, and this song is not about me. Okay, here we go. Uh... <laughs> and guys, if, we, if you don't laugh at this, we're all gonna assume why, so yuck it up, you tiny dick motherfuckers. Here we go. <laughs> song about a dude, tiny penis, awkward sex, his point of view, not about me. Ready, go. <laughs> Say something, I'm right on top of you. <laughs> Be patient, I haven't hit my groove. <laughs> the least you could do is kind of move. Say something, I am inside of you. <laughs> am I? Am I really that small? I've been told that it's skinny, but it's strong. And it won't hurt you at all. Am I, am I really that small? 
small Maybe your vagina's kind of big <laughs> Like throwing a hot dog down a hall <laughs> Say something, I'm right on top of you Stop tweeting, that is just fucking rude <laughs> Two more pumps, and I'll be through. <laughs> Please say something, I am inside of you. Thank you very much. And let's start and let's get the screen. Here's the deal. Now, you guys are about to watch a video. One of the things that I've been doing here in Nashville that's been a ton of fun with these is I've been shooting music videos. And uh, we shot one a couple weeks ago uh, to a parody. Uh, we're going to run in back real quick. Uh, we're going to do a quick little costume change, bring a couple guests out. But while I'm back there changing it up, please enjoy this video. I'm going to introduce real quick. This is Kurt Chambers on guitar over here. And this is Miss Taylor Lynn. Hi, so, y'all. Uh, hello, everybody. Hello. Now, uh, Taylor, uh, she came to me about writing a song together. And do you want to tell, her, tell everybody why? Yeah, I do. You were the perfect person to come to. My grandmother is Loretta Lynn, and she writes... Oh. Yeah. She writes her truth, and it's my 10-year anniversary with my husband this year, and we've really been going through... Yeah. Some new stuff. We're in a new period in our marriage. And so I came to Josh. We could write a song together. She wanted to write a song about something that her and her husband have been talking about. And I just think it's probably pretty universal for a lot of couples. And so, uh, but I thought I would, we would put it to a song that, um, that Beth liked also. Uh, so we could ruin that one as well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, whenever you're ready. Man. I am. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait a second, wait a second. Oh, oh, whoa, oh, tie your shoe. I didn't put my shoes on. That's all right. Because I felt like I should come out in my uniform feeling just as sexy as I could. I like your sparkly pants. Yeah, yeah. well, this is Conway Twitty's wife's shirt. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. his widow. What's that? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh. What? Yeah. Tell me something, girl. Are you ready to give it a whirl? And we could take it slow. Whatever makes you the most comfortable and you told me we could try it on our 10th anniversary well my dear decades up the time is here mm. Tell me something, boy Will you go first? I'll use a toy on me Why do you seem scared? You want it so bad it, You could go first, it just seems fair You tell me For better or worse from to eternity but what's up uh. what's the big deal we do lots of crazy stuff this ain't no BJ this ain't no Broadway we're talking about anal now I was trying to hold 
all the dancers. Oh my god! Okay, okay. okay. Talking about anal now. Okay. Uh, what should I do it if you won't go through it? We're talking about. for that part of the show, aren't you? Yeah. All right, uh, well, listen, I guess I'm stuck in this outfit for the rest of the show. I'll switch back to, I'll switch, switch back to the hat. It makes me comfortable. Um, but I'm gonna play, you know, I really love, uh, yeah, I'm gonna, can I get my hat right now? Uh, it, it just feels so, Yeah, it feels a little better. Oh, hey. um, okay, so uh, I always, I love dudes who play sexy music and sing about things that aren't sexy. And so uh, I wrote a couple of tunes. This one I wrote, man, um, my buddy a, a while ago, he was like, hey, can you make a video with me and put it on top of my dating profile? It's getting pretty competitive out there. And I said, I don't know what that means. And he was like, let's just make a funny video and put it on top of the dating profile. I go, okay. And so we did it, and by the way, super funny, but nothing he said about himself was real. And I was like, how do you not, you don't tell the truth on dating profiles? He goes, no, nobody does. You just, he said, you just show up and figure it out. And I was like, and he said, if you had a dating profile, would you tell the truth about yourself? And I go, yeah. And he said, would you do a video? And I said, no, I'd probably write a stupid little song. So this is the song I would have on top of my dating profile to tell you a little something about me. All right. You know that I want you, baby. You know that I got you, baby. You know that I need you, baby. So come, let me please you, baby. But I fuck with my socks on. And I fuck with my black socks on, girl. And I fuck with my socks on. And I fuck with my black socks on, girl. Got bad circulation, baby. My feet are like ice cubes, baby. Deep vein thrombosis, baby. I'm on medication, baby. 
That's why I fuck with my sock song. And I fuck with my black sock song, girl. Couple other things I should probably tell you. My legs are pale, they're almost kind of light blue. There's a chance that I'll Dutch oven you. Oh, and my stamina's not what it used to be. So when we bang, you gotta get on top. But I'll have my socks on. And I'll have my black socks on, girl. And I also, I also shave my... Now, let me just say, I want to address the balls for just a second. Uh, yo, I just want to tell anybody whose partner insists that they take a straight blade or a razor to their balls does not understand the topography of a nutsack. That's all I'm saying. Yo, that's like shaving your brain. You're going to nick that motherfucker a couple of times. You know what I mean? By the way, every guy in here will tell you that first time you nick your nuts, you have no idea how much that's gonna bleed. You know what I mean? Yeah, the first time you nick your nuts, you're like, am I about to bleed out? Is this the end? I put my feet up on my heart. I called my dad. I'm like, am I about to die, man? Tell me what the fuck. Yeah, no, not balls, bro, not balls. <laughs> Shoulder. All right, one more quick one. Um, okay, so uh, I always find it funny, man, that whenever you hear rappers or rock stars sing about sex, it's like everybody has a huge dick and has sex all night long. Everyone, I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm at an age where if you told me, I wanna fuck all night long, I'd be like, that sounds terrible. <laughs> One time in an episode of Friends, and I'll see you tomorrow, you know what I mean? <laughs> but this is what I would think would be an honest song from a rock star about what it would be like to have sex with him. Thanks for coming by. You're looking mighty fine, I'll say. You're wearing yoga pants. Let's do some downward facing doggy. Rough. Come right in and lay your clothes on the floor. By the end of the night, girl, I'll have you begging for more. And are you ready for some? Uh, Ready for some uh, uh. And are you ready for some uh, 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 uh. And are you ready for some uh, I'm getting pretty tired Are you ready for the best Two minutes of your life And are you ready for the best Two minutes of your life Of your life Come right in and lay your clothes on the floor. That's not the words. <laughs> lay you down, put on a romantic song. You won't have to listen to Freebird. That's ten minutes too long. I'm gonna start that verse over. I'm fucked up already. Here we go. I'm not like other guys. 
I won't waste your whole night I know you're busy girls Your schedule's not the only thing that's tight And are you ready for some ooh? And are you ready for some ooh? Ooh! And are you ready for some bleh? And are you ready for some ooh? Sorry about that, let me get you a towel. Are you ready for the best two minutes of your life? And are you ready for the best two minutes of your life? be able to hear somebody who knows how to play guitar um, but here's the deal so I, I um you know uh, there's a certain part of my body that I'm very proud of and um, and so uh, I wanted to sing a little sexy song uh, about it now, hold on one second Whenever you're ready. <laughs> On the day I was born, the doctor said to me, You are a vision of what a man should be. Legs long, thin too. of the dainty ankle crew and I yell I don't got one I got two I look good in high heel shoes I am the dainty ankle crew Now the good looking women, they come up to me and say, hey man, what's below the knee? <laughs> yeah, ladies, believe what you heard. When I take off my pants, I look like a sexy ass bird. And I because we've actually never played together before, so. That's how it's true. This is all, this, that's true, yeah, we've never played together. So, um, all right. So, Kurt, let's, um, all right, here we go. Let me tell you, one of the other things, one of the things that I love the most about my wife is that she really lets me be me, right? And um, she also, people ask her a lot, do you mind that he smokes weed or so much weed? And I think she would tell you, um, she likes me better when I'm hot. Uh, because I, <laughs> she's like, when you don't smoke weed for a month, you never shut the fuck up. <laughs> so I, we wrote a couple of weed tunes. Um, and uh, let's start with this one.
You know I like some weed Let's start that again. I'm a little behind you. Yeah. Okay. Go like this when I'm supposed to go in. Okay. <laughs> you know I like some weed. It's got me super high. Let's go get some munchies. Pretty sure I can drive. <laughs> Let's go to Taco Bell. Get a Gordita Supreme. Drive through McDonald's. Fries in a dream. But I need sweets. Candy or bakers Too many choices I have I don't know what I want I know, I know I bet you never played with someone who's supposed to know what they're doing and go, tell me when I'm supposed to say something. <laughs> I don't know, tell me when I'm supposed to talk right now. Tell <laughs> Listen, guys, uh, you know, one of the things that I love most about being here is I have a ton of friends here and I have a ton of creative friends who like to come around and fuck around with me and do weird shit. I have another one of my friends in back. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, from NSYNC, Mr. Chris Kirkpatrick, everybody. <laughs> Are, you out? Are we out here? Come on up, man. Come on up. There he is. Chris Kirkpatrick, everybody. Let him hear it. All right, You're man. the only person here that I don't understand how we're friends. <laughs> Like I sat here all night going, I can go out the back and no one will ever know I was ever here. Just tell Josh, don't call me up because this is getting ridiculous tonight. Hey, you guys, I'm gonna do a set about weed. Let me bring my insane buddy up. Uh, hey, come on up. Did you, did you see him put Dre's titty in his mouth? I don't think you saw it. I, I, I'm I not watched on the you. I saw the whole thing, and I, I just looked. At, I was like, I was gonna send some sympathy cards to Dre. Yeah. Because I know Dre was trying to be funny, and yeah. I don't know what's going on right here, but y'all are out of control. <laughs> Starting with your shirt. Are those seahorses on your shirt? Oh, those are geckos. Well, come you can't see them. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, guys. They blend in. Um, 
So, are you ready to sing this song? No. <laughs> hey, and by the way. Seriously, one, seriously, I have, like, Philip, you know. Tonight is like, I don't know what you're on tonight, but like, you're actually singing pretty good. Like, I wouldn't kick you off some of the talent shows. Hey, hey. Which is opposed to most times where I'm usually like, that's my friend. Good yeah. thing he's fucking funny. Guess what? your J job. Guess what? That's because I didn't take 100 milligram edibles, just 25. Uh, oh, cool, more weed jokes. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm a responsible adult. Um, okay. So, uh, you ready? All right, let's see what you got. Sounds like one of our songs. It might be. Oh, and by the way, I changed a couple lyrics. That's okay, so did I. Oh, shit. It was the first day that my mom set out. It was uncomfortable. Oh, I remember she told me in her past life that she was a cat. And not only that, she had three extra toes. She lets her back hair grow. She was raising five little kids from five different dicks. I really want to leave, but mom will be mad at me. So guess what? I'm gonna need weed. It's early in the morning, in a long line, you know, to get your car off. Then at one person in front of you, she seems really confused. What's in a chai? Are those muffins dry? Hey lady, what the fuck? Have you never been to Starbucks? There's a lot of an angry mob going to thankless jobs. And I forgot the words because I changed them up. So guess what? I don't need any more weed. a day when you have to go to your cousin's wedding and you're gonna 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 gonna, gonna, gonna we're gonna, gonna need weed maybe stub your toe or run out of dough you don't like your ass so you take a bar class whatever your that I just did that. Are you kidding me? I'm live streaming with Fatone right now. <laughs> oh, shit. No, the really weird part was I thought we were doing this like three weeks ago when you said we were. Yeah, yeah. So I had the words memorized and over and over in my head. Then they go, hey, we need you to do this anti-drug thing in Vegas. Can you come out and sing It's Gonna Be Me? Nope. <laughs> Chris Kirkpatrick, everybody. Hey. You know, some songs, I just, they, they catch me and something happens during the middle of the day where I'll write a quick little jingle. And um, so this is the latest little one. Uh, this is the latest little one. Um, he knows what the fuck, what am I talking about? <laughs> This is the latest little one. I hope you like it. I don't even know what fucking song you're playing right now. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, it sure doesn't sound like anything I've ever played before. What is that? It sounds great. Okay, ready? Okay. In my car. Driving around, music's up. I am lost in the sound. 
She pulls up to my right Looks inside at just the wrong time And she saw me pick a booger Ah, I just picked a booger Ah, why'd I pick that booger Ah, I just picked a booger Ah, that's all I got Ah Have a good day. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to play that one off, isn't it? Where you're like, ah. Um, all right. It's like, God bless. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I was telling you, you had something up your nose. I was just trying to tell you. Um, all right. This next song is something that happened to me at my brother's wedding. And uh, we'll see how it goes. At my brother's wedding Talking to the DJ I was supposed to tell him about The songs that he could play My brother likes hip-hop And he likes classic rock He could get down to some R&B He likes to dance to some pop DJ smiled at me He said don't you worry, son I've done this a hundred times I guarantee he will have fun But can you please tell me Are there any tunes I definitely should not play You think we'll kill the mood And I said, whatever you do Don't play Hotel California I hate that fucking song It's so goddamn long And everyone here hates the Hotel California Not one single time And not one fucking line The DJ stared right through me his eyes went cold as ice And he said well, I've been playing that song at weddings Since 1979 And who do you think that you are to Change my ways I'll play Hotel California And I'll also play YMCA That's all I got for that song uh, Ladies and gentlemen Kirk Chambers, everybody, let him hear it one time. Yeah, one more time for Kurt, everybody. One more time. All right, guys, we're just gonna wrap it up with a couple quick songs, and we get everybody out of here. Um, I uh, I can't believe. Okay. All right. So we're gonna try it. In, in me fashion. Um, it wouldn't be me doing something like this without trying something brand new, so. Um, yeah, I know. Um, and I'm pretty sure I'm off. I know the lyrics to this song and we'll find out real quick. So th I have a very anxious dog. This song escalates a little bit. <laughs> well, I have got a very anxious dog. He doesn't like to be alone, and when you leave, he loses his mind. He's broken out of every kennel we bought. But yeah, he tears right through them. The last one, he left the door on our bed. Like a complete asshole, yeah. 
what you cherish, oh, he'll eat. <laughs> he knows what matters most to you, yeah. Did I mention he opens doors now? <laughs> My dog is Jason Bourne. Is that the remote you need for your brand new TV? Are these your favorite shoes? You mean these that I chewed? And I'm gonna shit in the corner. I just a shit in the corner. Go clean up my mess. <laughs> oh, it gets weird. <laughs> and lately things have taken a weird turn. Like early this morning, I woke up with his paw on my mouth. And he was staring right at me, yeah. Hard eye contact. He licked my face Slow and firm without consent Yeah, are we doing this now? And I pick up your shit? I'm my dog's prison, bitch I'm gonna fuck up your house Yes, I will, yes, I will And I'm gonna pee on your couch Yes, I will, yes, I will And I'm gonna Bark at a black guy. People will think that you're racist. Yeah, you'll get canceled. Thank you. Hey, will you hold this for me? You, you're gonna be my Bobby Boucher? You can do it! Uh, this next song, I'm definitely gonna lose a few of you. Uh, but I'd always wanted to parody a song three times in the same song. So here you go. This one definitely escalates also. Oh, I should've had Kurt play this one. <laughs> I was walking one day with my buddy. I was walking one day with my puppy. I saw my buddy drinking coffee by himself. And so I called him to see what he was doing. He looked at the phone, but he didn't pick up. Dude, that's me. It's me calling You saw me Me calling I love my grandma She's quite an old lady Been in a wheelchair For 29 years And then one day, while watching TV, she reached for the remote control, fell out of her chair, and now she, she's crawling, you know she, she's crawling. If you, if you didn't like that verse, I'd walk the fuck out for the next one. If you can't handle the comedy show, you know where it's not happening? On the fucking street. See you later. And by the way, I'm serious. This next verse is really going to bother you if that one did. But this actually happened to me. I worked on a TV show with a kid named Corky called Life Goes On. He was mentally challenged. 
And then one day he couldn't remember his lines And the director yelled, what's wrong with him? Dude, he's re- He's retarded You know he's re He's retarded By the way, I did this song last night and people started to sing along. I'm like, you can't sing along to this part. <laughs> Fuck. You, yeah, you can't still part, you can't sing along to it. You can't sing along. And I want to say, can I, I'm going to give you guys a little comedy nerd shit if I can. So... When you do co comedy, it's so much about timing and your inflection and your words and how you use them. So I had to really think about how I wanted to do this part of the song. So I've done it two different ways. I did it this way. Duties re, right? Retarded. And I did another way. I, do, I said, dude, he's retarded. Now, when I did it like that, people booed. And I'll tell you why. Because when I say, dude, he's re, you guys are making the joke before I do. I don't got to do shit. <laughs> So don't get mad at me, you laughed before I fucking said it. Okay. Four songs, we're gonna get out of here. Babe, I'm gonna play you a song at the end, okay? You're gonna come on stage for the last song. Hey, Bobby? Bobby? Bobby. H2O, well, thank you. That's that quality H2O, well. thanks, Bobby. <laughs> All right. So people ask me a lot why I don't drink. I don't drink because I make bad life decisions when I drink. Uh, you might be here with one of yours tonight. Uh, <laughs> So, we're just gonna end it up with these four songs, and here we go. George. What, do I, is there already people out there? Would you prefer two songs instead of four? Four. Three? Three. All right, we're gonna do three, and here we go. I, um, I, I wrote the song after I talked to a girl I went to high school with, and um, I remember her because we were the last two versions that we knew. And so I remember calling her on the phone and telling her we should be each other's firsts. And she was like, why? I said, first of all, we're both virgins. Um, we went to preschool together. And she was like, what does that mean? I said, well, what that means is I've known you forever. You've known me forever. Embarrassing things are gonna happen on the first time, but we're like buddies. So I would rather something embarrassing happens in front of you. And I'm sure you'd rather have something embarrassing happen in front of me. And she was like, you know, you're right. It's a great idea, we're gonna be each other's firsts. So this song is how that night went. <laughs> and by the way, guys, like the song doesn't go, we fucked for four hours, she came 30 times, like that's not the song, you know what I mean? <laughs> that's not what I'm singing about. <laughs> you said I'd be your first and you'd be mine. We'd be together until the end of time I laid her down and I kissed her lips Jeans on jeans and hips on hips Things were going just as we planned She was my girl and I was her man Yeah, and right before we began Well, I... Yeah, yeah <laughs> Came in my pants, I came right in my pants. Oh, please don't tell my friends that I came in my pants. And she was good to me, said it could happen to anyone. She said she'd give it a second try. She called the first one a dry run. I set the mood just right. To make sure what happened last night didn't happen again 
I jerked off four times before she came over. And then I jerked off two more times because I was a teenager. And I could do that back then. And it fucking felt great. Oh, ho, ho. Yeah, yeah, dude. If I were you, I'd put a fucking cape on when into my room. Like, superhero. Ooh, and she looks so pretty. She unbuttoned my pants, no mess. Hello, kitty. Yeah, and then my hand brushed her titty. And I came on her pants. I came on her lime green pants. But what the fuck is going on? I'll never see a vagina at this rate. Yeah, years went by. And we talked from time to time. I met her husband at the reunion. I really liked him. He was a nice guy. But he and I were about eight drinks in. When he smiled and he said, you know what, man? I gotta tell you, and he said with a grin, I know you came in your pants, and that you came on her pants too. You know she tells all her friends, the guy on TV came in his pants. She started a Facebook page, and it's called Sticky Drawers, where you can tell funny stories about sex. Oh, and believe me, she's told yours. <laughs> I wanted revenge, I didn't know what to do. We all got drunk and ended up in my room. They passed out first. That's a rookie move. <laughs> so I... came on her pants and then I came on his pants too and put that on your Facebook page but with a big old fuck you thank you alright two quick ones now, you guys remember the song by Four Non Blondes it goes hey, yeah, 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 yeah. I say, hey. all right. Yeah, fucking finish it up. I like it. That's your part. So obviously we do not need to rehearse that. Uh, all right, this happened to me when I was a kid. Woke up one morning when I was a kid. I wanted. Woke up one morning when I was a kid. Wanted to get some breakfast on Maybe some eggs and bakey And then I rubbed my eyes and put my feet on the floor I looked down the hall, parents' door And I saw something a little peculiar It was my mom around and my mom she made some pretty weird sounds and I screamed at the top of my lungs get off my mom and I said Let's bring the lovely and talented Bethany Ashton Wolf out here. Bethany, come on out. Are you not? Right through here, Bethers. Come on up here.
Hey, thanks. <laughs> Beth. Thanks for wearing my favorite pants. We talked about Father's Day and, and how easy it is uh, to get a present. And so this is just in case. Can I have Bobby? <laughs> Thank you so much. So this is just in case for anybody who actually does want to get a gift for their man in their life. Uh, I thought I'd write a little song. Um, it's pretty easy. Uh, but so, you know, I would tell you that Beth is an amazing gift giver. Like, she researches gifts. She's one of those people that'll research a gift for like 60 days, and when you open it, you're like, did you talk to my third grade teacher? Like, what the <laughs> fuck? But the gifts are amazing. And I always tell her, man, you, it took you 60 days? You wasted 59 days. <laughs> gifts for guys are easy. So this is a song for anybody looking to get a gift for that special man in their life. I hope this helps. A couple people catching on to the joke already, all right? That's all right, everybody. Look, if you're at my show and you're looking for my jokes, they're right fucking here. They're not, if you're looking around for them, you're gonna miss them. They're coming right the fuck at your face. Okay. Song for anybody, and then guys, thank you so much for coming out tonight. And this will be it for us. You're always so thoughtful. Gifts on my special day. Asking friends and family about things that make me feel great. But let me try to help you. Let me ease your mind. Cause it's pretty easy. You just have to ask us. <laughs> we'll fucking tell you. I just want a blowjob and a sandwich. Let me save you some time. I'd like a blowjob and a sandwich. I don't need another fucking tie. And I haven't worn cologne since the eighth grade. You and your sister use the couple's massage. I'd like a blowjob and a sandwich. At the same time. At the same time. At the same time. Timey, 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 time. I like turkey on wheat. I like ham on rye. But to make this day complete, well, there's one more thing that I'd like to try. Now I know when guys say try, women always think that we're talking about anal. Cause that's true. Just not this time. I just like a blowjob and a sandwich While I'm watching TV Turn on ESPN Little Predators highlights Watching grown men skate around in tight pants Now I know on your special day I'd give you anything that you need Trips, jewelry, or clothing I'd bring the moon down to its knees She doesn't have to tell me Cause I know what she really wants Because she's told me before I've still never done it <laughs> You'll see why she says she wants me naked for washing dishes in a Ryan Gosling mask throwing coats in the rain telling all of her friends quotes from the notebook over again I wrote her every single day 
what Guns N' Roses song is like this? Patience. All right, let me see if I can do this dude's voice at the end of the show, but we'll try. We're going to end it with patience, and we're going to get everybody out of here. All right, patience, right? You ready, babe? I love you. Thanks. I love your pants. <laughs> a blowjob and a sandwich. Yeah. A blowjob and a sandwich. Yeah. A blowjob and a sandwich. I just want a blowjob and a sandwich While I watch TV in bed I promise not to get any crumbs on your head I just want a blowjob while I watch some TV That'll feel so fine to me in a blowjob Yeah, and a sandwich Ooh, a blowjob Thank you all so much for coming out here tonight. I had a great time.